Hey there everybody, Professor Cloud here with another how-to video for the game No Man's Sky. One of the most important monetary items that you're going to need throughout your playthrough of No Man's Sky from beginning to end is nanites. There are a number of ways to collect nanites just from finding them out in the world, interacting with devices, uh, as well as turning things into different entities on the anomaly. Most of those are very straightforward and they you learn about them very early on. However, if you really want to upgrade yourself, upgrade your multi-tool, upgrade your ship, purchase upgrade modules, or just research things on the anomaly, in most instances you're going to need a large number of nanites. Especially if you find, say, a multi-tool out in the world, but it's only a C-class, and you really want to keep that multi-tool, well, you're going to need 10,000 to get from C to B. 20,000 from B to A, you get the idea, and it goes up exponentially. So where can you go out into the world and find nanites beyond the common ones that I already talked about with respect to the entities or interacting with different, like, damaging, uh, repairing damaged machinery out in the world, things like that. Well, I have actually in the last couple of weeks been taught and found some new ways to actually farm nanites. Now, there's really only one true way to farm large numbers of nanites, but for early and mid-game players, there are ways to find hundreds at a time that maybe you didn't either think of or maybe you didn't even know existed. So, in this video, I'm going to show you five different ways that you can extract nanites from different things out into the world and then leverage them as you see fit for research and purchasing capabilities. Let's jump into the first one. Okay, this first one that we're going to be talking about is purely related to using your refiner whether you carry one around with you in your inventory or whether you've gotten to the point of researching the personal refiner that's part of your backpack. Whichever way really doesn't matter or you can absolutely you know, take what I'm going to pitch to you back to your base and do the refining there. In either case, this is all based around refining. And you might be going, well, Brian, Professor Cloud, there are no items out in the world that can be refined into nanites. Not true. There's actually two. The first one is very straightforward. Right here you can see I have found an abandoned building as part of the emergency planetary charts. Now if we go into the abandoned building, every one of them have a deserted terminal. And if we go to the exam deserted terminal, you'll see resi residual goop. I'm actually going to grab this and put it in my exosuit. And I'll show you why in a second. Let me go ahead and clear through this. So that I can get the nanites that are actually part of this. Not sure that you knew that these actually produce nanites. So I just got 130 nanites just for going into this deserted terminal. Okay. I have resi residual goop here. Instead of, say, selling it for 4,000 units, that's okay, not bad. Beginning of the, beginning of the game, 4,000 units is important. I'm going to open up my personal refiner. And I'm going to drop the residual goop into my personal refiner. The residual goop turns into viscous fluid. The viscous fluid will then turn into living slime. The living slime will then turn into running mold. Running mold can be harvested into nanite clusters. So, hold on just one second. I'm going to let this turn into viscous fluid in a little over five minutes. We'll come right back with the next step so that you can see this step by step. Okay, so we have our viscous fluids. 
I reduced the number down to make this go a little bit faster for myself. As you can see here, viscous fluids is a one-to-one -one return for living slime. The goop was a one-to-one -one return on viscous fluids. So in another couple of minutes, we're going to have the same 67 living slime. I'll be back as soon as we're done with that. Okay, so as I said, we've got our 67 slime. Now, this is where things start to get interesting. I'm going to turn this 67 slime into runaway mold. Runaway mold is what's going to be refined into nanites. So I'll be back as soon as this is done and I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about. Okay, we now have 67 runaway mold. And as you can see, it outputs at a 5 to 1 ratio nanite clusters. It means we're only going to get 13 out of this 67. It's not a lot. First of all, it happens very quickly, other than the previous three refining steps. But this is a very quick and easy way, especially for those who are new to the game, and this is all that you're finding, to be able to get some nanite clusters as you're playing. Because this is one of those things, once you get your personal refiner, you can just keep it running as you're running from one location to another. And it makes it very easy for you to get nanites, maybe in small amounts, but over time that will add up so that you can go purchase that uh, advanced mining laser upgrade or the cadmium warp drive or whatever it might happen to be. Now, remember runaway mold for later. I've got something to talk more about how to actually find runaway mold directly. Okay, so remember I talked about runaway mold and that that's what goop living slime and viscous fluids all turn into. You can turn runaway mold at a 5 to 1 ratio into nanite clusters. Well, guess what? Runaway mold also exists out in the world. Out in the universe. Now, it's very rare, but you can find it on certain types of planets. It comes across if you do a scan as a curious deposit, as you're seeing here. Now, if you can set your multi-tool up, with advanced mining laser, um, ultimate mining, um, an optical drill, combined with any upgrades to increase your mining output, you can turn these runaway mold into a large number of nanite clusters. So, for example, I've got this big one right here. I just got 391 runaway mold for that, and at a 5 to 1 ratio, that means that I'm going to get about 75 nanite clusters, or thereabouts. I've got a whole bunch of runaway mold sitting right here. That's going to be very helpful for me to get nanite clusters very quickly. And if you're really good about it, you can actually set up a farm where you know that there's a large number of runaway mold. What do I mean by that? I mean... If you see a big cluster of them, as I've got right here, set up walls around them, and then pop in and out of this world from a teleporter on a regular basis, say once a day or so, and you can trigger it more often, but once a day, twice a day, you can get nanite clusters in large amounts very, very rapidly. Runaway Mold is absolutely your friend, especially in mid and late game. So if you find it, set yourself up. Okay, this next one might not be as obvious to some, but will absolutely be obvious to others. I'm actually getting ready to scrap a ship or scavenge a ship. If you're interested in actually how to do that, I've got another video on my YouTube channel for walking through the steps of exactly how to scavenge or scrap a ship. But I have one ready to go. Let me go through the process real quickly. Now, most of you know that scrapping a ship is great for getting units. And they're going to be free units as long as you have the available inventory space to consume all of the parts that you would then sell for those units. But what you might not be aware of 
is that you're also probably going to get things like upgrade modules. In this case, there's an engine module. I also have a Starship Shield module. You'll see there that there's a value in Nanite. You, not everyone knew this. I didn't know this for a very, very long time, and I, I'll fully admit to it. You can actually walk right up to the Starship Upgrade Vendor, and even though they say purchase upgrade modules, you will have a sell button. And there's the Starship Shield module. I can get 314 nanites for that. So that's also a very quick way to gain some nanites if you find modules that you don't have a use for, you don't have slots for. Go ahead and grab the nanites now, and then you can obviously come back later when you have more if you need to buy those particular upgrade modules. And the last one, we're going to use a very, very simple thing that most people don't ever think about. As you can see here, I found myself a nice little asteroid field. Uh, this is one of the new capabilities, or one of the new things that everyone will find in the Endurance Update. I don't see any here, but in some asteroid belts, you will find these star-like rocks, or crystal-like rocks. And in most cases, they will produce platinum. Now as you can see, only 68 pieces of platinum runs for 34,000 units. So most people will, smartly so, convert that to units. They need the units. They want to be able to buy whatever it might happen to be. However, platinum can also be turned into nanites directly. No secondary location. So if we go back to my exosuit and specifically my refiner, and we then go and grab the platinum, at a 35 to 1 ratio, you can get nanite clusters. Now that might seem like a very large ratio, and deservedly so, but what do you need more? Do you need the units? Do you need the nanites? When you're short of only a few, or you're, you know, and you happen to have some platinum sitting in your ship, maybe this is another way to go to be able to get some nanites. Hopefully this has all been of use to you. Hopefully you've learned something. You've enjoyed the content. Make sure to hit the like button, make sure to hit the subscribe button, and I'll see you in the next video.